Good day, it's Father Tom, and I'm glad to be with you today. The name of the program is In Season and Out of Season. I do want to tell you that uh, I'm on WROL every day, Monday through Friday, 9.50 on the AM dial, and I'm on at 11.30 in the morning, and I'm on at 7.30 in the evening. That's 9.50 on the AM dial, 11.30 in the morning, and 7.30 in the evening. And I'm on WEZE every day, Monday through Friday. That's 5.90 on the dial, 5.90 on the dial, at 11.15 in the morning. So you can hear me at 11.15 in the morning at 5.90 and 11.30 at 9.50. So 5.90 on the dial, and uh, I'm on at 11.15 in the morning, and also I'm on at 9.45 in the evening and 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning. So all these times that uh, the Lord has given me to proclaim His Word, all these times the Lord has given me to proclaim His Word. So if you'd like, you can hear me on radio every day, Monday through Friday, 9.50 on the dial at 11.30 and 7.30, and 5.90 on the dial at 11.15 and 9.45 in the evening. 11.30, in the morning, 9.45 in the evening. And also, if you would like, there are many, many things on the Internet, inseason.net. I-N-S-E-A-S-O-N dot net. Okay, I don't often say this, and uh, I have received contributions from people, and I'm very grateful that people send me. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever asked on television, but yet people do send me uh, contributions for, for this ministry, and I'm grateful, and of course for the radio ministry, I'm always grateful. Okay, that's all the business. Now let's look at the Word of God so simple. Amos 5, 4. For thus says the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek me and you shall live. Now that's not very long, is it? Seek me and you shall live. God speaks to the house of Israel as well as to the church. Seek me and you shall live. Now I want to say the opposite of that is do not seek me and you will not live. You will not have life. You will not have life abundant. You will not have that grace that God gives. You know, one person went to uh, Padre Pio and when she went to Padre Pio to go to confession, before she even began, she says, I am so upset with you. And the woman was, she didn't even start her confession. I am so upset with you. You do not pray. You do not seek the Lord. What are you doing with your life, she said. You do not pray. You do not seek the Lord. And yet, that was the changing point in her life. How did this man know this? Well, God showed him. Seek me and you shall live. Those who thirst for him, their thirst shall be quenched. Those who hunger for him, their hunger shall be satiated. To thirst for the Lord, to hunger for the Lord, is so important, so very important. Not very many people talk about it. I'm not only saying, say your prayers. I'm saying, Pour out your heart to the Lord. Tell Him everything. Tell Him how much you love Him. Tell Him how much you've been disappointed. Tell Him everything. You say, well, the Lord knows these things, and He does. But He wants to hear it from you. Tell Him. Tell Him. Tell Him. He wants to hear it from you. Seek Him, and you shall live. But you see, you cannot seek the Lord if you do not spend time with Him. If you do not have a time that you have arranged in your schedule to be with Him. Because you see, time 
is of the essence. It goes by so quickly. If you do not make a time, you will not find a time. It's that simple. I have a friend, Ryan, and he just has a new baby. He was in the seminary, went all the way to the end, but didn't become a deacon, got married, has a new baby, and his prayer time is between 5 and 6 in the morning with his new infant baby on his chest as he seeks the Lord. Because it's important, 5 to 6 in the morning, I could never do it. Not with the time that I go to bed. But you see, he spends that time. Tonight, you know, it's a Friday night when I do this recording. We have Mass at 7.30. Then we have Adoration. I will be with the Lord after Mass. Because I need to be with the Lord. I need to be with the Lord more than you. Because I'm always preaching. I'm always telling the people of his love, telling people of his mercy, telling people of his goodness. So I need to be with the Lord. And you know, it's so important. Seek me and live. Do not seek me and you will not have life. As a matter of fact, you will not even know the meaning of life. So many people are like robots. They go just around, you know, going from one thing to the next really not really counting, not really counting at all, you know, I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, and I've got to do the other thing. Rather than when you do these things, then it's more than just doing them. It's an occasion of grace. It's an occasion of grace. You see, I, I went to, to the hilltop today to buy meat. And when I went there, this man stopped me, and he told me his name, Mr. Cardillo. I had his son and daughter when I taught school. It was an occasion of grace, an occasion of grace. We went for a sandwich today. I don't know if you found that place on Route 1. It's called Ronnie's. The sandwiches are the best. And the man said to me, Father, would you pray because I'm going to open up in the evening. So I said to him, well, you know what? I want to make sauce for you. He says, listen, he makes sauce just the way I do. He told me how. And I, I, he said, sauce is nothing. I said, it's true. It is nothing. But most people don't know that. Most people don't know it's nothing. You go to the North End, the, the sauce stinks. And it doesn't take anything to make a good sauce. But he says, I'm opening up in the evening. And would you pray that I get good business? I said, I will. And I have. See, everything can become an occasion of grace. You know, everything can become an occasion of grace. We never go into the uh, China Roma in Revere when we don't have a prayer meeting with the people. The last time I went, prayed with people, and Susie, she's the little Chinese girl that works there. She's probably the only Chinese girl that works as a waitress, rest in her chapman. And Susie had cancer, and I had prayed with her. And I said, how is Susie doing? Susie's doing much better. You see, you go, you, you know, you go from one thing to the other, but it's more than just going to China Roma. It's more than just going to the hilltop. It's, it's more because you have the occasion of grace for people and for yourself. Seek me and live. Seek me and see that life is worth living. Seek me and you will find me. The scripture says, when you seek me with all of your heart, then you will find me with you, says the Lord. When you seek me with all of your heart, then you will find me with you, says the Lord. People's lives begin to change when they pray, when they seek the Lord, when they call upon the name of Jesus, when they really do it with all their heart. Things begin to happen. Things
things begin to happen. And you know what? I can't make you do it, and you can't make me do it, because nobody checks up on us. Seek me, and you will live. Seek me, and you will live. Do not seek me, and you will not find life worth living. And maybe that's exactly why you're watching me today, or listening to me today. Because you haven't been seeking the Lord. You haven't been praying. Oh yeah, you say prayers, you rattle them off. Hail Mary, full of grace, blood of free, best of soul American. Remember that one? Remember that on Lucky Strike? hundred years ago? The guy would be there, you know, as an auctioneer. We pray like that. Hail Mary, full of grace, blood of free, soul American. Rather than, even if I pray to Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me with you, says the Lord. Seek me and you shall live. So important. So very, very important. How many people have told me my life began to change when I began to really pray the rosary? How many people have told me that? And Jesus became so real to me. I said, well, that's wonderful because our Blessed Mother always leads to Jesus. How many people have said that to me? I was told a story just Today, this young boy was coming into, uh, or going into a church, to where Father Martin was. And Father Martin was speaking and singing and praising God. And this young boy, his heart was touched with the beginning of his life being changed. I'll tell you about this young boy now. He's in Poland. He was waiting for a train. And these three young people, hoodlums, came up to him and said, give me your money and your cell phone. He said, no. And they said, We'll kill you. He said, let me tell you something. Jesus, Lord, loves you. Look in my eyes, he said. Jesus, the Lord, loves you. With that, one man, young man, started weeping. Started weeping. This is a 25-year-old young man. He was with us for two weeks. This young man is so filled with God. His name is Lucas. So filled with God. Yesterday, these 16 people went back to Poland. They heard there was a full plane. And Lucas said, we're going to have a lot of work to do on this full plane. That it's not only going to be an opportunity to fly home, but we're going to tell people about Jesus. In the airport at Logan, he met a Polish woman. And he said, listen, we just came from Poland. You need to go to Holy Rosary Church 
in Winthrop, and you need to go pray there, and when you see Father Tom, you ask him to pray with you. It all started when he was brought into the church that day, and Father Martin was singing. Now he seeks the Lord. He seeks the Lord. You see, seek me and live. And I'm going to tell you something else that's so beautiful. These kids that came from Poland, there was a young man that just lost his mother. He's not Polish. And you know, he's kind of a shy guy, you can tell. But every time he came to a service, these kids would draw him in and make him part of what was happening. So not only did they have faith, they had love. It would have been an easy thing just to be together and not draw this young man in. Matter of fact, the young man in Mark is going to go to Poland for a while. You see, things happen when we pray. Things happen when we pray. Just the other night, we went to a Polish church in Rhode Island. And uh, I'm just going to tell you that Polish people are very stoic, at least the place we went. And, you know, I was saying things that were very profound, some of them, and some of them were very funny. Nobody laughed. Nobody laughed. Was, I'm expecting it, you know, even a really laugh. I wasn't trying to make a joke. I was just trying to loosen up the people. Nobody laughed. But when I started to pray with people, the first person I prayed with was a young man. His wife took him to me. I said, what's wrong with you? I've been in pain in my jaw for 33 years agony. So we started to pray. First time we prayed, he says, it's 10% less. So we prayed again until it got to 70% less. And he said, I have no faith to believe. I said, listen, you don't have to have faith to believe. I have the faith. If I was sick for 33 years, I'd have no faith either that I could get better. So don't even worry about it. At the end, it was completely healed. That's what prayer does. That's what Jesus does through prayer. That's what God knows how to do. Seek me and live. There was a woman who came up to me. I said, what's wrong, dear? She says, my heart beats at 140 beats a minute. That is very, 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 very rapid. So I began to pray and declare in the name of Jesus and through his blood, this heart will beat 60 beats a minute. And I kept on declaring it. Heart, hear the word of the Lord. Hear Jesus speak to you. No more rapid heartbeat. No more skipping the heartbeat. 60 beats a minute. I called the nurse. Nurse came over. Take her pulse. 66 beats a minute. She said, that's excellent. I said, I'm praying for 60. We prayed again for 60. From 140 to 60. That's what God knows how to do. What things we forfeit because we don't pray. What wonderful things we forfeit because we don't pray. What wonderful things could happen if we just would pray. Now, this is reality, okay? I'm not talking on reality. I'm talking reality. God says, seek me and live. Now, you can either take that as an admonition and live it, or just say, you know what, Lord? I've got better things to do. But you really don't. You really don't have better. I don't have better things to do. Seek the Lord and live. There's another scripture from Isaiah. It says, 
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is still near. Now listen to that one. Seek the Lord while he may be found. One day it will be too late for you to seek the Lord. You'll be on your deathbed. And you who have never sought the Lord will not think of the Lord. That's real. So seek him now. Seek him now. There was another lady we prayed with. She got healed instantly. 93 years old. I looked into her eyes. I said, honey, you know why you were healed so instantly? She said, why? I said, because you pray a lot, don't you? She says, yes, I'm alone. I said, oh no, you're not alone. Jesus lives with you. She says, yes, he does. 93. She looked better than me. She had arthritis in the hand. Immediately it was healed. She had a knee problem. Immediately it was healed. She prayed. Most of the other people had to keep on praying. But, you know, I knew this lady was a woman who sought the Lord. Seek me and live. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is still near. Because one day, you won't even think about seeking him. It'll be too late. This is real. This is absolutely real. I'm not trying to scare you. It's time to seek the Lord. But you think that God doesn't love you. Well, then, I think as you gaze at the cross and back of me, I guess he sent his son to die for you because he hates you. I really don't think so. He sent his son to die for you because he really loves you. That's why he sent his son. Because he really loves you. The Bible says, for a good man, maybe someone would die for but it was while we were yet sinners that Jesus died for us. While our back was against them. When we wanted nothing to do with them. Oh, I've gone to jail and I've prayed with people in jail and, you know, they said, you know, I was going through a living hell and I went into the, my cell and I was having the worst day of my life and I just said, oh God, I need you. And they said, heaven opened up. I experienced the love of God. I experienced peace. And I've never stopped praying since. Seek me and live. Don't seek me. And you will not live. Your life is worth living if you seek the Lord and all your pain can be turned into joy. You will find that Jesus is a healer as you seek him. You will find he not only forgives your sins, but he heals. That's why he died. But you know, I can't convince you. I can only exhort you. I can only say, please spend time with the Lord. Please spend time with him. Because he cares for you. He loves you. He has plans for you. Seek the Lord and live. And most people today are not living. They are existing. And there is a big difference between living and existing. There is a big difference between living and existing. Most people are existing. The Lord says, seek me and live. Be thirsty for me, and I will quench your thirst. Jesus said, let the person, the man who thirsts, come to me and drink. For out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Seek me and live. Be thirsty for me. And I will quench your thirst. 
hunger after me. Hunger after me. And I will satiate your hunger. But you can't do any of this without time. You need time to be alone with the Lord, to look at him in faith. You might just sit in front of a crucifix. You might have a candle there. It makes no difference. Whatever helps you to pray, you do what helps you to pray. Seek me, and you shall live. Lord Jesus, I ask for the grace that we would seek your holy face and that you would satisfy our hunger. For, Lord, we have looked for love in all the wrong places when you were there waiting for us. We have sought love in relationships. We have sought love in food. We have sought love in drugs, sex, alcohol, and we're always disappointed. Lord, give us the grace to seek your faith, to call on the name of Jesus in the midst of our triumph, and to believe he's going to do a mighty thing. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you.